Today we ask the question, will a pineapple really tenderize a cheap ass piece of steak? I walked into the supermarket, I said, I would like two of your cheapest steaks, please. And he said, I'm, I'm sorry? I said, two of your cheapest steaks, that's what I'm asking for. And he gave me these. There's hardly any marbling, it's a not expensive cut. And generally speaking, it would be tough. But apparently, the much-loved pineapple isn't just delicious, it also has enzymes in it that break down the tissues in a protein and allow it to become very tender. Two steaks, one will be marinated for one hour with the pineapple and the other one will not. We'll cook them both and find out how we do. The easy way to get the crown off a pineapple is hold the bottom, put your hand here and twist. That's the easy way. I do like to say sometimes that easy is not necessarily right. So we'll try a different procedure. We're gonna use a knife, but we're not gonna cut like this. We're gonna cut like this. Oh God. So, I'll move my processor. Jilly is over there, she might wanna think about moving. The idea will be one smooth, can I do it? I'll give you a second to take bets amongst yourselves. I'm feeling pretty good about this. What do you think, Max? Well, do you remember the last time we drilled the pineapple? I do remember. I, okay, so truth be told, I haven't had much luck with pineapples. I had an idea about drilling out the core of a pineapple that didn't quite turn out. So you just take the points in and... Oh, f <laughs> That was not what I expected! <laughs> There's only one reason this won't work. Do you know what it is, Max? I don't. That I'm a fucking terrible slicer with a big ass knife. And I have no sense of anything. And by the way, this is not glued down. Because I can hear somebody going, Oh, the guy glued it down or stuck it down. So he'd have a better chance. No, the guy didn't do that, loser. Here we go. So last time, not glued down, alright? This shot will not change. Not glued down. Here we go. One. Shit. Two. Three. 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 Oh. Well, I have to say. <laughs> It worked, but it was hugely fucking anticlimactic. No, that was pretty good. And let me add a sound effect to it. Ready? <laughs> Stupid. All right, let's just cut this down and get it in the processor. Or as we say in Canada, the processor. So now we'll just take the sides off. <laughs> what a mess. God. I do believe we could use this outside, but we're gonna go without. The bottom. And now we just want the sides of this, right? Because the core, we don't really need. So we'll chop these guys up. And in. And the lid. Ready, Max? Ready. And we process. The goal was to turn this basically into a puree that we can put in with the steak in a bag. So let's do that. Okay, steak, bag, and we pour. Gross, huh? Smells good, you're right about that. Now we wanna make sure it gets underneath. 
it all the way around. So now let's seal it up. Get out as much air as we can. And there it is. All right, we take our little friend here, beautifully marinating in 100% pure pineapple. We'll put him on the plate with his buddy, put him in the fridge. We come back in one hour. We're 30 minutes away, 30 minutes away from the, uh, the steak being ready and the pineapple marinade. And I have an idea, something that I want to, look, we could just cook steak and take a bite and eat it, but wasn't it better if I give you some idea of something that you can make with the steak? Astro, I know you can't hear him, but I'm very sensitive to Astro. So isn't it better if I give you an idea of something to do with it once you've got it? Of course it is. So I've got two things here. I've got sliced cremini mushrooms and I've got sliced red onion. We're gonna soften them both. The onion goes on the flat top, the mushrooms go in the pan, they get gorgeous. We work our way towards fucking pineapple, tenderized, marinated steak excellence. Yes. We'll start with some avocado oil in the pan. The sliced cremini mushrooms. Not one, but two containers of them because, Max? They shrink down. They shrink down to frickin' nothing. We'll let those start, and then right here, some oil and our red onion. And by the way, if we don't use all of these red onions, no foul because they're fantastic in the fridge and can go in a million things. The goal for both the onions and the mushrooms is a beautiful soften. And if you could stand here and smell what we've got going on, you'd be in red onion heaven. I mean, look, this is gonna shrink down to about half. You want a pound of uh, mushrooms when you're finished cooking? I mean, really, start with like 17 pounds. Whoa! Oh boy, oh boy that was almost Sorry. fucking a terrible thing. So we're going to add a couple things to the mushrooms, but not yet. Because they're not there yet. They got a ways to go. So the onions are almost done. Give them a little salt. Some fresh ground pepper. One more little shot of avocado oil. A mix. Look at that gorgeous color. Wow. So in love with red onions. And now, off they come. Perfect. Now the mushrooms. And if you look in here, you can see the liquid bubbling away. About another minute and that will be gone. And then we can add what we want to add. Make a little place in the center. Add a little shot of oil. And we add some fresh garlic. A lot of it, one big fat clove. We mix. Mmm. And in about 30 seconds, once it's super fragrant and amazing, it gets, ready Max? A little shot of soy. Just to umami the hell out of it. Give it that beautiful little savoriness. Pass row. Tiny pinch of salt and some fresh ground pepper. Final mix. And these are ready. And after an hour, that's what we have. It's not very exciting, is it? The unmarinated steak and the one in the pineapple juice. We're not gonna cook it like this. Let's get this off first. 
So we take the guy out of the bag, and we give him a quick rinse under running water. <laughs> Goodbye pineapple. I mean, we don't want this thing to taste like Hawaii. We just want it to be tender. And when the pineapple's off, straight onto some paper towels to let it dry. Like this. And then onto our plate. Now let's have a look. Unmarinated, marinated. Clearly there's a color difference. And you can see the, 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 the beef is starting to almost separate. Look at that. That's crazy. That was one hour. I can't imagine what more would do. All right. We're going to season them exactly the same way. They'll each get kosher salt. Fresh ground pepper on both sides. Remember, these guys started out virtually the same size. And now look how much wider the marinated guy is. And when that's done, nothing left but to cook. First, the marinated, and next, the non. We'll go about uh, three-ish minutes aside, changing direction after about a minute and a half. They're not that thick. But whatever we do to one, we do to the other. We are supremely fair here. I know this is not very exciting watching these cook, but uh, it's what we need to do to get it where we want it to be. We'll give them a little turn. Stay together, you. Another minute and a half or so, and we flip. And a flip. Look at that, it's shredding itself. And this guy. You know, this is actually interesting. There's more color here on the non-marinated one. There's less color here. In addition to the shredding, which is odd, but I kind of get it. That pineapple has broken down the steak so much that I don't know why it's not getting color on it. Okay. One final turn. Uh-oh. We lost the piece. And this guy, another minute or so, and off we come. And here we go. First, our pineapple steak. And it's a little extra piece that fell off. Here we go. This is crazy, huh? It really is interesting what that's done. So let's see. Let's cut this guy. Wow, look how juicy that is. There's its inside, and here's this guy. Take these guys away. And here's its inside. So, I'd say they're cooked pretty even, no? Yes. Definitely. Yes. So now, Let's make a bite of each. And we'll taste. First, the non-marinated side. This guy. Pretty chewy. I like a ribeye. Lots of fat, lots of flavor, super tender. I like a tenderloin. Not a fan of that. Now the pineapple marinated side. Looks the same. It's beautiful. And now for the taste. Hmm? It's pretty good. definitely more tender. Look, I started with a very inexpensive cut of meat. That did not turn this into a filet at all. 
but on a scale of one to 10, 10 being very tender, the non-marinated one was about a five and a half. And the marinated one with the pineapple was probably a seven and a half. So is there a difference? Yes. Does it taste like pineapple? Uh, there's a tiny bit of sweetness. Would I know? Mm-mm. I don't think I would know if somebody just put it in my mouth and said, what is this? I'd go, it's steak. And it's, it's, it's okay. What have we learned with this? I think we've learned by a decent cut of steak. I believe that is what we've learned. We've proven a theory that the pineapple juice breaks down the enzymes or the enzyme in the pineapple juice does the right thing to a steak. That being said, I would rather have a good piece of meat once a month than an okay piece of meat once a week. That's how I feel. But since we've got this steak sitting in front of us and you saw me make the onions and the mushrooms, let me make one thing that will make all this worth it. Cool? Cool? Cool. All right, let's start by slicing up the steak and we'll go with the pineapple one. So I want this just into thin bites. I know you don't really know what I'm making yet. You'll find out very soon, but I want it to be easy to eat and I'm not putting giant chunks of meat in it. And then maybe just run my knife through once more and continue cutting against the grain here. Now look at all the juice coming out. Of course, you should let a steak rest a bit. That's always the thing to do. Let the juices reabsorb back into the meat, thereby making it more tender ultimately when you have it later down the road. But when you've got enough steak cut, step two, the bread. Look at the dust. A beautiful little ciabatta that I bought at the farmer's market this morning. So we'll give this guy a nice even cut if I can. Like this. Sweet. And now I want to throw this on the grill and get it nice. So I'm going to give it a little drizzle of avocado oil. And on we go. Uh-oh, fire. Jeez. What the? Well, I put oil on it. <laughs> Come on, you. Don't be like that. Mother effer. This is going to be freaking delicious, though. I'll just keep it away from the flame. I'll play a game of hide and seek. Your reward's going to be something great. And when it looks gorgeous like this, oh, man. Just you wait and see what's going to happen. Here's our bread. All right, check this out. Let's make a little sauce for it. It's going to look like this. Japanese mayo, a little HP sauce, which is, sorry, steak sauce from Britain, very good. A little Montreal steak seasoning, a splash of the avocado oil, we mix, open her up, mamma mia. This will go on here. Now, this is arugula, undressed dry arugula that gets a little shot of the avocado oil, not much. Tiny bit of salt, some pepper. Mix this with our hand. And now this will go on here like this, gorgeous. Okay, on top of that, Max, our steak. Jeez, how beautiful is that? The most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Next up, do you remember the onions, Max? Oh yeah. Here come the red onions. Right on top of that, one of my favorite things with steak, some crumbled blue cheese. Crumbled blue cheese with red onions and steak 
for me is one of the great joys in life. One more thing, mushrooms on top. And a lid. Okay, now I don't know. This started off being an episode about tenderizing a steak. I think it's ended up an episode about one fucking amazing sandwich. Before I take a bite, I just gotta say, I love the little branding iron mark on top from the grill. So it's got uh, everything you want, I think. Uh, perfectly cooked steak and uh, the Beautiful arugula and caramelized red onions and the mushrooms with a little splash of soy and the blue cheese that pulls the whole damn thing together. So let's just cut here. Take a look at our little bite. A little bite. Oh my God, the melting blue cheese. Do you see that? That's where the magic is right there that melting blue cheese. And if you don't like blue cheese, I feel sorry for you, and you should learn to like it. You should learn to like it. All right. The sauce. Mayo, steak sauce. That little kick of saltiness from the Montreal steak season. If I went to a restaurant and I was offered this, I'd be oh so happy. Oh boy. You know, the sandwich is a last minute idea. I thought, you know, the steak with the marinade and tenderizing. It's interesting, but it's gonna be a short episode. We need a little bit more. This became the thing, dripping down my hand. This became what it was all about. This was a means to an end. Thank you, Pineapple, for bringing me this. And thank you for being there and watching. <laughs>